Hey YouTube, Andrew here, a guy with a tractor. Today we're going to talk about adding circuits onto my John Deere 3025E. Now, anyone that's done wiring knows there's multiple ways you can run circuits. You can run them all the way to the battery, which uses a lot of wire. You have to get a, a fuse link and put in it. There's also a way you can tap into existing circuits, which I don't recommend. Um, you're potentially going to overload that circuit that you're tying into. Um, the way I'm going to show you today is inexpensive and really easy on these tractors. So if you want to watch the rest of the video, stick around. Please click the subscribe button and click the bell notification for future videos. Thank you and have a good day. So to access the fuse panel, I need you to pull this handle on both sides. Well, right here is the fuse panel. So if you blow a fuse, those little red tabs, you push them back on both sides. And then squeeze in on both sides. And there's your factory fuse panel. Let me get y'all in here closer. Now, this fuse on the top right here, on the far right, is not used. This one on the middle row on the top is for your cruise control, which the wiring's pre-done for it, and it's on the other on the switch beside the PTO. So I don't want to mess with that. And I've looked at these and I don't have the connectors for to connect into this fuse bar. And I don't want something all gaudy and looking rough. So there is another option to tie it into a fuse box on these John Deere 3025Es. Now, on like the 1025, if you uh, check out Tractor Time with Tim, he's got a video when he's installing his Artillion Grapple where he taps into the fuse block on them. And there's a lot more empty spaces on them. These have a lot more smaller fuse blocks so you're more limited on them but i will uh, show you the alternative method instead of using one of these that's a lot easier than removing this big fuse block all right on my 3025e the fuse block that's up on the console below the steering wheel is full so i need some more power Come right here on the left hand side of the tractor, pull two tabs on top, two tabs on the bottom. You get another fuse block with your mega fuses. This one goes your alternator, glow plugs, and the other fuse block that's up top. Right here on the top is a little rubber cap. If you pull it, there's three empty fuse spots right here. Now, right here, is a little plug that you can pull out right here. Now, when this comes, there's there's no wires in it. But I've already put one in, and I'm going to show you how to put the other ones in so you can put the corresponding fuses in and have extra circuits using the fuse spots that are provided by John Deere. All right, so here are the terminal ends I got. It's uh, called terminal assortments. They're for a Ford. Um, part number, it's Dorman 85377. Picked them up at AutoZone for like six, seven bucks. 
Um, they got two of each one in here. And this little one right here, you can see that little bitty square one. It's going to be the one you're needing. There's a bigger square one in there. And then a smaller one. The smaller one is the ones we're going to be using today on the John Deere tractor. So when you get this plug, ignore this wire. It's going to come like this to spread these two tabs on each side and pull this end out. And down in here are some rubber plugs. Take a pocket knife and just grab them and pull out. Just like that. Now you have access all the way through to put a wire in like this. All right, for the wire, I'm using some 12 gauge stranded wire. No matter what I want to put on it, I'll be able to run it. I'm going to strip off about a half an inch or so of wire. Just like that. Now these connectors say that you don't have to solder them on here, but we're going to. So I dip that in solder and or flux, and I'll dip the end in flux. And just like that. Now there's probably a special tool to crimp these on. I don't have it. So I'm going to use my needle nose and just, it's a little slippery with that flux on there. I'm going to crimp one side in. And I'm going to bring the other side down on top of it. Just like that. Now I want to keep it. I don't want it any extra wide as far as this way. I want to make sure these are crimped in so they'll slide in. Now, if they're a little bit wider this way, that's fine because this piece has to go through. But you want it to slide in nice and pretty. All right, now that we have the terminal end crimped on there, we're going to solder it. Like I said, they say you don't have to solder them, but I feel more comfortable soldering it. So we'll solder it now. We'll flux on our wire. And we're soldering our nut with our wet sponge. Tap the solder on there. Fresh solder on there. We're soldering down looking pretty. I'm just gonna get them hot. So we got plenty of flux. I'm going to hold that right and drop it. And put that on there. And then get that good and heated up. Try number three is the third time's the charm. You have that connector, plenty of solder down in there to fuse it all together. And right there, it's all soldered together.
So there's no way that'll come out of that end. Now that we have our end on, we'll take about three quarters of an inch of heat shrink and just heat shrink right there at the, where the connector is. Just keep water from getting down in the wire, hopefully. Well, this is a waterproof end, so it should be pretty good. So now we're ready to install our wire in. You can see that now. I know the the spades on the terminal run this way. So we're going to look at this and know that how the spades go. And it will only click in one way. It won't go that way, so we'll flip it over. Try to get it in. This wire's a little stiff. There we go. And just push it on up in there. A good ways. You may have to take a pair of pliers and shove it on up in there. All right, so if you use 12 gauge wire, this little piece will not go back on here. It's, there's too much wire in here for those little pieces right through there to slide up in there. So, but you got good contact up in here. So the wire shouldn't come out. All right, so to check this, we're gonna plug it back in. And I've already got a all right, yeah, getting snapped in. I've got a one fuse plugged into the middle one, so it's this one if we didn't just blow it. And we're gonna we got a little test slot and we have power there. So let's pull that fuse out there, stick it in the top one. and test it. This is the top one. And we have power there. So now, pull the fuse out before we blow it. So now there is a quick way of adding up to three more circuits on your John Deere 3025E. And there you have it. 20 minutes, maybe 25, and adding a nice, neat circuit with a fuse that's easily accessible and looks almost factory. So thank you for watching. And don't forget to, if you haven't already, click the subscribe and click the bell notification. Thank you and have a blessed day.